Hi, I'm Jason Luger. I'm an urban geographer and city planner. I'm faculty at UC Berkeley in the Department of City Planning in the College of Environmental Design. And welcome to part three of a five-part course, Introduction to City Planning. For this course, we're gonna look at mid-century, specifically 1940 to 1979, what I'm calling mid-century modern. In this course, we'll explore the way that planning was central to the envisioning of cities in the middle 20th century. World War II and the Cold War reordered power and politics in new ways. The tragic destruction and loss of the war gave rise to some exciting and innovative opportunities for planners to try new things in new ways. Meanwhile, global movements like decolonization and movements of people around the world, as well as ideas around the world, some of them violent, opened up a new frontier of planning from and not for the global south. Civil rights would become important within planning in the United States and elsewhere. Planners would be some of the most notable actors advancing civil rights, and unfortunately, in stopping civil rights. As part of rebuilding, state housing and state infrastructure were provided at a massive scale. Meanwhile, industry was changing, and some of the earlier industrial cities, from Manchester to Detroit, fell into a deep decline. Students will learn about these key developments, as well as understand the evolution of contemporary planning by comparing previous movements and the origins of modern design, social reform, policies, and politics. We'll identify key global shifts in the cultural, economic, political, and industrial relationships and hierarchies between and across different cities. We'll recognize how city planning as a discipline emerged from the ideas of writers, politicians, architects, designers, and social reformers. We'll compare and contrast the ways that technology and innovations change cities and the way planners must plan for cities from cars, airplanes, and air conditioning to the use of the computer. We'll critically evaluate how historical planning movements were successful and how we still borrow from them, but also how they were failed, and how and why some cities rose and fell over time, and why that's relevant for cities today. And finally, we'll recognize and assess the relationships between planning, the economy, politics, and society, the way that the Industrial Revolution gave rise to other types of revolutions and transformations and how that links to our contemporary urban world. After this introduction, we'll look at the way that different thinkers, writers, philosophers, and planners envisioned the future during and after World War II and how that often realized in cities. We'll look at the destruction of the war and the different ways that cities rebuilt, but also the destruction wrought by urban renewal policies in the United States, a different type of destruction and rebuilding that had nothing to do directly with the war. We'll look a little bit more closely at some of the developments within the school of planning and how that continued to specialize as both an academic discipline and as a professional practice. We'll talk about how new innovations like cars, but also air conditioning and computers, once again, change the relationship between the built environment and people and also the way cities operate. We'll look a little bit more critically at what was right about mid-century planning and what was wrong. And there was a lot that was both right and wrong. And we'll conclude by looking at the dawn of what I'm calling the neoliberal age, which started around 1980, and that will bring us to the, uh, the current time.